Hey everyone, welcome back to Code in Motion. Today we're solving Glee Code problem number 105, construct binary tree from pre-order and in-order traversal. This is probably one of my favorite Glee Code questions because it's a super interesting one and it forces you to really understand the different traversal types in a binary tree. Now, before we get started with this, I highly recommend all of you check out my blog on the binary tree traversal Glee Code pattern because it goes through all the different traversal types, their respective orders, the differences between them, and when should you use each one. This is gonna be a good background information in order to solve this problem. With that being said, let's actually take a look at an example over here. So we have this tree that has the pre-order traversal of three, nine, 20, 15, and seven, and the in-order traversal of nine, three, 15, 20, and seven. We need to use these two arrays in order to construct the original tree. So before we get started with this specific problem, I just wanna give a conceptual overview and a general reminder about the different types of traversal techniques in binary trees and what the difference between them is. So I'm actually gonna go over this snippet for my main video on all the common leak code patterns that you need to know. This is number seven, binary tree traversal. And over here, I'm gonna go through the three different types of traversals so we could see the difference between them visually. So let's add in a couple of trees and let's start with the pre-order traversal. In the pre-order traversal, you explore the node before you explore their left and right children. So that's going to look like four, two, one, three, six, five, and seven. In the in-order traversal, you explore the left child, then the current node, and then the right child. That's going to look like one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. In the post-order traversal, you explore the children nodes first. So that's going to be one, three, two, five, seven, six, and finally four. So in this example, we're dealing with the pre-order and in-order traversals. One thing I want you to note is that in the pre-order traversal, it actually tells you the root node as part of the first element, right? So we explore four first because we explore the current node before the children. So the pre-order traversal gives you the root node and it actually tells you a lot about the structure of the tree. In the in-order traversal, one thing I want you to realize is if you look at the current node inside of the list, for example, four, all of the elements to the left of four appear on the left subtree. All the elements to the right of four appear on the right subtree. So the pre-order traversal tells you a lot of information about the current element that you need to create or explore. And the in-order traversal tells you a lot about the structure and the shape of the tree. It tells you if nodes appear on the left or the right portion of the tree. A common question that comes up is why do you need both the pre-order and in-order traversals to construct a tree? Can't we only use one of those arrays to construct an original tree? And the answer is no. And let's take a look at this visually. So if I create three trees over here, I want to calculate the pre-order traversals for each of them. Let's start with the first one on the left. This is gonna be three, then nine, 20, 15, and seven. In this case, this is a skewed tree, right? Now let's look at a more balanced tree in the center. In this case, we start at the root node, which is three, then we go left and then right. So nine, then 20, then 15, then seven. And lastly, we have a skewed tree to the right. That's gonna be three, nine, 20, 15, and seven. What do you notice about all of these pre-order traversals? They're exactly the same. So a pre-order traversal does not necessarily guarantee structure of the tree. It only tells us which nodes were explored first. Now let's take a look at the in-order traversals. So I'll have three more trees over here and let's calculate the in-order traversals. So we have nine, three, 15, 20, and seven. Then we have nine, three, 15, 20, seven. And then finally again, nine, three, 15, 20, and seven. So what do you notice once again? All three in-order traversals are equal. The in-order traversal, once again, does not tell us about the general shape of the tree. It just tells us which nodes were explored first. However, when you combine both the pre-order and in-order traversal, you can guarantee structure of the tree, which we'll see now. So finally, let's take a look at the current problem. We have a pre-order and in-order traversal, and we need to construct an original binary tree with the proper structure. So let's use each traversal technique for its main benefit. 
What is the benefit of the pre-order traversal? Well, it tells us what the current node that we need to create is, right? We know that the first node is the root node. The next node is the next node that we need to create or explore because it scans the current node before it scans its children nodes. Then it scans the left and right children recursively. So let's create an eye pointer that's going to keep track of the current node value that we need to create. So in this case, we know we need to create three, which is the root node. So let's go ahead and create that. Now we move I along because we know the next node that we need to create is nine. We just don't know where it exists in the tree. Do we make node nine on the left subtree or the right subtree? Well, now let's use the in order traversals benefit. The in order traversal tells you which elements are to the left of you and which elements are to the right of you, right? So all we have to do is find the index three and then split that array into two portions, the left portion and the right portion. In this case, if I want to calculate the left subtree of three, I'm going to split the array onto the left subtree, which is nine, right? So if you look at the in order traversal, three is the first index. So we're going to split that into two subarrays. The first one is just going to be nine and the array on the right subtree is going to be 15, 20, and seven. So the in order traversal is going to tell us which nodes exist in this specific portion of the subtree. So now we have nine and now the pre-order traversal tells us that the next node we need to create is nine. So let's create the node nine. And now for node nine, we need to create the left and right subtrees. So we're going to create subarrays, right? We're going to split the array nine into two subarrays, one for the left, one for the right. In this case, what do you notice? There's only one element, it's nine, and we already used nine. So the left and right values that we can use are nothing. They're just the empty list. There's no more values to use to the left of nine and to the right of nine. So this is actually the base case. If the in order traversal is empty in our recursive calls, then we just render the null node. So we just return null. So we finished with the left subtree of node nine. Now we go to the right subtree of node nine. In this case, we get an empty in order traversal list. So we render null. Now we're done with node nine. So we recursively go back to node three's call stack. And now we need to calculate the right subtree, right? And so in the right subtree, what values do we know we need on the right hand side? Well, that's 15, 20, and seven. However, what's the current node that I should create? And that's where the pre-order traversal comes back into play, right? The pre-order traversal is really good at telling us what is the current node I need to create. In this case, it is 20. So I'm going to create node 20 and I'm going to move I to the next node that I know I need to create. Now for node 20, I need to create the left and right subtrees. First, let's start with the left. When we go left, what is the in order list that we should recursively pass? It's going to be all the elements to the left of 20, which is 15. So on the left hand side, we know that we need node 15. And the pre-order tells us that the next node to create is indeed node 15. So we create node 15. Now we move on to node seven for I. We're going to keep track of the next node that we need to create, but we need to finish up node 15. Node 15 needs a left and right subtree. So we go left. And in this case, what's the list? The list to pass is empty. There's no more values to use to the left and right of node 15. So these are just going to be the base cases, which are null. So notice that when we have a base case, which is null, we actually don't increment I and we don't use the pre-order traversal, right? We just use the null base cases and the pre-order traversal keeps track of the next node I need to create when the time comes. So now we finish node 15, we go back to node 20, and now we need to create the right subtree of node 20. In this case, we take all the elements to the right of 20, which is only seven. That's the only element we have left over. And the pre-order traversal confirms that the next node we need to create is indeed seven. So let's create that. We move I, so there's no more nodes to create. We just need to finish up seven. So we go left, it's an empty list, so it's the null node. We go right, it's gonna be an empty in order list, which is once again, the base case of null. So let's wrap that up. And now we finished node seven, we finished node 20, and lastly, we finished node three. So now we have the binary tree and the proper structure. Now the time complexity of this is O of N because we simply iterate through the pre-order and in order list just once. And the space complexity is O of N for the recursive call stack and also creating the binary tree. All right, so now let's start with the coding implementation. 
For reference over here, I have the in-order and pre-order traversals just so you can reference them if you want to visualize them as we code out the solution. And the first thing I need to do is initialize an eye pointer. Now, the eye pointer is a little bit tricky because this eye pointer needs to be shared throughout multiple recursive call stacks, right? And so what I'm going to do is be clever over here and just set the eye pointer on the actual Python class so that the value is shared across all recursive call stacks. So I'm going to say self.i is equal to zero. That's going to initialize our eye pointer that keeps track of the pre-order list and the next node that we need to create. Now we need a helper method, right? And the helper method is basically going to keep track of creating the left and right subtrees for the current node. And we know that that's going to use a, a sublist or a subarray of the in-order traversal for every recursive call. So the helper method is going to take in an in-order traversal list that's going to be a subarray of the main in-order list. And we're going to see how this is going to work. Now, what's the base case? The base case was when there was an empty in-order list. Remember on the visual, if there's no elements to take, then we simply return back none. That's the null pointer. So if the length of in order is equal to zero, then we return back none. Otherwise, we actually have a node that we need to create. Now, what's the value of the node? Well, it's going to be pre order at i, right? So pre order self.i is going to give us the node value. And then we need to be careful here. We actually need to increment i so that we know what's the next node, right? So let's just increment i while we're at it. And now let's actually create that node. So I'm going to create a node, so tree node, and the value is going to be node value, the value that we got from the pre-order traversal. Now I need to recursively call helper in order to create the left and right subtrees for my current node. However, remember that we need to create a subarray for the in-order list. We need to take all the elements to the left of our current element in the in-order traversal for the left subtree and then all the elements to the right for the right subtree. So the first thing I need to do is calculate the index of my current node value in the in order list. So index is equal to in order dot index node val. So give me the index in the current in order traversal at which this current node values exists at. And now we could actually make the recursive calls for the left and right subtrees. So node dot left is equal to helper. We need to pass a sublist of the in order list. So this is going to be in order. We're going to go from zero up until index. And in Python, that's non inclusive. So it's really index minus one, which is exactly what we want. And then for node.right, we're going to call helper. And this is going to be in order index plus one, because that's inclusive. So we go one past index all the way to the end of the array. And then finally, we return back the node. And we're actually done here. So we just return back helper of in order. This is the original in order list, which contains all the elements. Let's run this and verify that it succeeds, and it does. However, if you noticed, we have some inefficiencies in this algorithm. The first inefficiency is how we're finding the current index in the in order list. Note that this is an O of n operation, right? We're scanning the entire list to find the node value. Is there a quicker way to do this? Well, yes, there is. We can actually just create a hash map of all the values and point them to the correct indices for the in order list. So let's actually improve that first. So I'm going to create an in order map, and this is going to be for every node value, point to the index. For index node value in enumerate in order. So this is like a lot of Pythonic stuff going on over here. It looks kind of tricky if you've never seen this before. But what we're actually doing is we're looping through the original in order list. And the enumerate keyword in Python gives us the index and the value for every single element in this array. So now we have the index and the value. And what we're doing is we're creating a hash map where we point the node value to the corresponding index. What this is going to allow us to do is that now instead of an O of N search, we could search in O of one. We could search in constant time by saying index is equal to in order map node value. Okay, so we improve the algorithm slightly. Now, the other thing to improve is that we're creating subarrays or new arrays for every single recursive call, right? You notice that we keep on slicing the array over and over, and we're invoking the method with a new array over and over. This is wasting a lot of space, and it's pretty inefficient. Can we use pointers instead? So instead of having a list, I'm going to introduce two pointers, J and K. 
and this is going to keep track of the subarray or the sublist that I need to scan within the original in order list. So now what's our base case? We need to tweak this. Instead of saying that the length of in order is zero, well, what we really want to say is if this is not true. So if not j is in between zero and k, then return none, right? This is basically saying that the boundary of the subarray is not valid, right? What else do we need to refactor over here? Well, now we need to refactor the recursive calls. This is no longer valid. We need to return back the J and K pointers. So that's easy enough. We know that we need to start at J and we're going to go to index minus one. And likewise over here, we know that we need to start at index plus one and then go up to K. And the last thing we need to do is just update the initial call. So this is going to be zero all the way up to len in order minus one. Let's run this and just verify that it succeeds. And there we have it. Thank you so much for watching. I know this was a long one, but I hope you learned a lot, especially about the different traversal types and binary trees. And if you're interested in seeing the Blind 75 in animated format, be sure to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.